I'm Dan Efren. It's the witching hour. Everyone else is in bed. I've been thinking about steampunk all day. It's time for a midnight build. Let's go. So I have a steampunk project in mind, and it needs an apparent power source. It's really going to be battery powered, but it needs to look like it's powered in some, some old-timey way to give that proper steampunk look. I don't want to make it steam-powered, although that would be the obvious thing. I thought about a winding key, a fake winding key that's always fun, but I decided that I'd like to actually make a replica of an old battery. Commercial dry cell batteries were invented in the late 1890s, and by the early 1900s were already in wide use, so it would not be unreasonable for a a device in the steampunk era, which is approximately the science fiction version of the Victorian era, it's not unreasonable for such a device to be powered with a period Victorian battery. And so I decided to make a replica of a Victorian battery to put modern batteries in as a power supply for, uh, for other steampunk props. And that's what we're going to do tonight. The first step in a project like this is research. I looked online. And sure enough, I found a website, radiolaguy.com, with a great set of build instructions for just such a project. Okay, we're looking for a cardboard tube, 2 and 5 eighths inch diameter. Let's see what we got. Too big. Much too big. Too small. That's two and three quarters. It's a hair big, but we're gonna go with it because uh, it's pretty close. Let me take off some of this stuff. Pretty good. Really, I should do my own research to confirm the exact sizes of these old batteries, but this guy seems to know what he's talking about, and I'm just going to use his numbers without any further research on my part. And I'm going to take a few other liberties anyway with this design, so it's not going to be an exact replica. I marked that in a few places, and I'm just wrapping this tape so that the edge hits all of those marks and comes back to itself. Now I know that that line is pretty straight all the way around because the tape has made a complete circuit. Now I can cut that. There's our battery to be measured twice, cut once, six and one eighth inch. Always keep your thumb out of the way of the blade when cutting. I'm not trying to cut all the way through in one circuit. Go around and around as many times as I need to, cutting just a little bit each time. Because these cardboard tubes are many layers of cardboard. It's best to acknowledge that with the blade. You can take the tape off now because we've got a firm line established. The knife will just fit right back into that groove. Cut some more. Now that I have a pretty deep groove there, I'm gonna see if a jeweler's saw will cut through that. If so, it may go a little faster than trying to get through that quarter inch of cardboard with the exacto knife. Sure enough, that's cutting, so we'll do this for a bit. Now I think we can switch to a regular hacksaw. So we've widened the slot even farther with the jeweler's saw. Finally we have cut through that very thick cardboard and we're ready to move on. This old vitamin bottle fits nicely in this tube. So that'll be our end cap.
the triangular tips on these large drill bits for wood are pretty good on this sort of soft plastic, but there's a better way to make these holes. A real number six dry cell was 1.5 volts, but I may not stick to that for this replica. Welcome back. It's another midnight. Time to continue our midnight build. Got to brass nuts to make a steampunk project like this. The screws I thought I was going to use are a little short, so I got some longer ones. I need room for a nut inside to hold the wire on. Might need a washer too. Room for the wire. Then room for the plastic end cap. Then another nut. Then this knurled nut. That's going to be the user thumb screw for attaching the wire to your dry cell. And with the wire sandwiched between these two washers. Be able to squeeze it tight very easily. Very nice. Goes between the washers. One of my terminals is leaning towards the other. I guess I cut the hole on a sloping part of the plastic and I don't think it looks right. These drill bits work much better on this plastic by hand than on the drill. Historically the center terminal would be positive, so we'll use the red for that. Now I used some very short wires to connect to those terminals, so I've added some longer wires so that when it is time to change the batteries on this thing, there won't be any hassles with trying to reach inside. You can just pull the battery pack all the way out the bottom. Put some heat shrink tubing on these and shrink it up. And then some hot glue. On the screws. everything in place and insulate the connections and some to hold those wires down inside there. that a few minutes to cool. Now at the other end of these wires will go a battery pack of some sort, but I haven't decided yet how many batteries, what power requirements I'm gonna need to drive with this thing, so for now I'm not going to attach a battery pack. I'm just going to tuck these inside. Welcome back. It's midnight again. Time to continue our midnight build. The next step is to fill in this top surface. 
The original instructions call for tinted epoxy, but I don't really like to work with epoxy, so I thought about other materials I could use. Sealing wax, tinted hot glue. Eventually I decided to just try wax. I'm going to scratch up this surface a little bit so it isn't completely smooth. I got a big bag of these tea lights at the craft store for a few dollars. This works, but it's kind of awkward and dangerous. I think there's probably a better way. That looks pretty good. It'll take a while to cool. Meanwhile, it's time to work on the label. I like to make up my own brands for this sort of old-timey prop, so I just whipped up something in Illustrator, sort of primitive looking. If I wanted a label from an actual brand, I'd probably just go back to RadioLaGuy.com and buy one of his labels. He's got some replica labels that are just beautiful. But I prefer to make up my own brands for this sort of thing. It's more interesting to me to just make something up. I just printed the label on regular yellow paper, and I'm taping it to itself, not to the tube, in case I decide to put a fancier one on later. But I'm pretty happy with this one. That's our midnight build. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan Efron. Have a great day.